Hello guys, I hope you all are doing well. Today I wanted to make a quick video about how to set up and how to start your programming projects and make the best out of the project and make sure that everything is structured and well organized for other people to enter the project and understand it well or even the web page performance or the app performance having a good structure or a good set of rules before you start a project is always very key so that is what i wanted to make this video another thing that made me make this video was thanks to the comment of jason alicia thanks for your comment here's the video i decided to you know talk about file structure and so on but i wanted to expand upon how you can create those big projects you may want to do and be able to set them up for success from the very beginning just the idea of the project so yeah so first thing before starting a project there is an idea behind the project for example if i wanted to make a connected api or if i wanted to make a project that has more to do with styling and so on or maybe one that has to do with programming well the way i like to make or i five, i don't know if that is a word but yeah have the idea of a project is that i have this on notion which as you can see there is a portfolio website there is a clone website that i still have to do there is a crud website well which a crud website it is a create read update and delete website like a notes app i had to search it because to be honest i forgot and there is an api website that i already created and there is a bonus a perfect score website that i intend on doing with gatsby having this structure of projects you want to do is very good because you will have the main idea behind the project the main attractive behind the project itself so for example a clone website what that will allow me to do is show employers or maybe on my freelancing business, other people that I can replicate other designs. So that is a very good website to have on your portfolio. So yeah, always before creating any website, any application, write down the idea and write down, not necessarily write down the, uh, the reason why, but make sure there is a reason behind the project itself and how it could help other people or maybe employers be attracted by the projects you're doing so yeah always before creating any website any application have an idea and move on the next thing i highly recommend y'all to do if it's a very specific project or a very important project that has to do with styling and so on if it's backend it's not really that necessary but it is sketching the project how do i sketch my projects i sketch them in figma for example, here I have some drafts, but I have two sketches, one for the Realtors website that I told you guys before, one for my own business website, and the other one for my first portfolio website, which was done seven months ago. So that's it. And here you have it. As you can see, I did it this way. Here I have my Navmar, my intro, the about me, the skills, the projects. Here I had it on coming soon because I didn't have any other project. <laughs> so yeah, this is my contact me section and so on. This is the tablet look of it and this is the phone's look of it. And let me show you how it finished. It's this one, which here, as you can see, there is a lot of resemblance on this specific design. This is an old design. so. Of course, I upgraded it and so on, but it allowed me to basically have like a structure, have something to work with rather than just, I don't know, having the idea and saying, oh, maybe I'll put this here or I'll put this function here. So what sketching will help you with is having that structure and that concept before putting into programming components or well, programming itself. So yeah, I highly suggest you to do a sketching if it's a like an important project or a big project since well many people mainly on freelance what you will have to do at first is show them a preview of what the page will look like and then put it into code because if you put it into code directly without any sketch or something they may say oh i don't want this here or i don't want that here or i don't want this on this place so having a sketch with this structure before actually putting it into code is very good and well here is another sketch that i did for the realtors website and well it looked the same 
but with Figma, it's very easy to learn, but at first you will find that it could be a little bit difficult. I'll highly suggest you to invest 10 to 20 minutes watching a Figma tutorial, which everything here is free. Actually, Figma is a free software, so you can just watch it and create your own sketches like this, and it's very good. The next thing you want to do is select the skills or frameworks, anything you may need to use mainly, because here we're talking about main skills, like for example, a React, which is based upon a whole project or a view. So for example, let's say that we want to clone Amazon per se. Now here we are in Amazon, for example, let's say where I can see that I can do this on React and maybe, I don't know, SaaS, not really having to use a CSS framework. So I can just do all of this by myself with tasks or CSS. And here, as you can see, it appears to not be responsive. That is actually very bad because I think that uh, this is Amazon this is a big company. So maybe you will detect it on the mobile, but I'll do like a mobile option too, which will be very attractive for other people to see. So here, after figuring out this sketch and the idea of the project, I can say, all right, I can use, I don't know, let me see the skills that I have. I can use React with SAS and maybe post CSS for optimization because there are a lot of items here. And yeah, now I have the skills that I want to use. What is the next step? The next step is one that you may have seen up here, which is basically the development environment. This is important if you are already six to seven to eight months in web development or application development, which is having a dev environment. For example, there is Bit, which I think it is the easiest for Vue and React. Like if I'm being honest, I haven't used Rollup, I haven't used Webpack. I know a lot of Webpack, but I haven't really used it. I know of Snowpack and I know of Gatsby. Gatsby is something that I'm really wanting to get in and one that I have done some practices before and I know of, but I haven't done a serious project with Gatsby per se. So yeah, I need to really get into Gatsby and really understand because it is a little bit complicated. But for example, if you want to learn a bit, if you are really interested in making a project with React or Vue, which is mainly what I do, I haven't used Angular yet. You can look up the video here I did about Bit and you can learn it in less than 10 minutes. But yeah, another thing which is optional, if you're a beginner, you don't need a web environment. But if you really want to get into a serious project or make a serious project, it's always recommended to have a web environment as it makes everything very easy and very well put together. So yeah. And now after all of that, let's actually get into programming. But now with all of those principles and knowledge, I am able to create a project with a very clear mind. It's like, I'm not going here, going crazy, putting an index HTML and I don't know, see how the project turns out to be. I already have the main idea, the skills that I want to use, the development environment that I want to use and the sketch for the main structure for the page. So. Since we have chosen bit at this moment, which is in my opinion, the easiest, we can quickly just do npm create byte at latest. If you want to learn this, there is the video. I'll let you guys before, let's say npm create byte latest. And let's say, I don't know, clone website. There we go. And we'll do it in React. And we'll do it with TypeScript, which is something that I'm learning at the moment. So let's do clone. Let me make sure y'all guys see it better. City clone website and then npm install now that we have it installed like we can do npm run dev and there we have it control click and there we have it so as you guys may have seen on the video about bit what i actually do is open folder and then do structure projects and open it here and here we have it fully open we have to do the npm run dev again but as I've said, if you guys want to learn how to set this up quickly, as I did, y'all can check out the video. So this quick process is explained in a slow manner. So y'all can uh, really grasp all the steps. But yeah, and to mention Jason's comment, how do I structure my project? Well, first on a bit project, what I like to do is delete index CSS. Well, to select multiple items, you can do control click index CSS, app CSS, and I like to delete assets too. Yeah, I like to delete those three. 
and after they are deleted i won't show you actual code and, and what to do with the code itself because i don't think it's necessary here is more about the folder structure so for example we have something that is quite advanced which is components which you can create with angular react and view if you're an advanced developer what you can do is create a new folder here which is components and here you will put any components you want for example footer tsx and there we have it it will throw an error but that is normal we won't put any code itself so components it's a folder that i put everything component related to the project and what else is i like to create a pages folder which is for all the pages of the website itself because i've seen some people put their pages within components and i feel like that could be a little bit messy so for example let's say that we have a page solely for contact so let's do contact.tsx and here we have it created and now we have a components folder which holds the footer of the page and we have a pages folder which holds the contact section of the page so yeah another thing i really like to do is create a styles directed folder so we'll do it like this and here we have it with styles i like to put everything css sas related within this so for example if there is a very complicated project that requires post css and scss what i will do is create a folder for post css and create a folder for sas sometimes i will call it scss but i like to give it the name of sas so now we have those two folders and well let me put something in to make sure it is not that confusing so let's put one here and let's put another one within post css well now that i've seen <laughs> i put sas within post css that's why we had the little bug right there so yeah here we have it here you will put all of your sas files for example main.scss and so on if you want to learn about how i do my styles you can check out the sas video i did and you can learn sas in less than 45 minutes so yeah that is how i do my styles and well here you can have an overview of what you can see here which is app css and main.scss oh, well something else to add which is a data folder there we go here we're going to put all of our .json all of our apis and so on so yeah the next one is hooks i actually do not know much about hooks itself and when is it necessary to put a hook within the folder I've used the hooks folder just a little bit to put use effects and so on, but I haven't really used it that much, but I always like to have a hooks folder. And the last one, which is a controversial one, which is the images folder. I like to put it within source. I know many people that like to put it within public, but I don't feel like it is good for performance. Back then, the images folder was not working for me when I put it in source. But what you have to do is, is to be very specific within the links you're putting in to import those images. But essentially, I like to put my images folder within source rather than public, which is something that many people do. And I don't think it's good because people will be able to see your images within, what was it, sources? Yeah, they'll be able to see them here, all of them laid out rather than having them within source, which I think is better for performance of the page rather than you know having to load all of the images separately and then loading the src file i think having images within src is better having it at public so yeah and well something else extra i wanted to show you guys was dependencies what are dependencies dependencies are i don't really know how to describe it but they are like tools basically to make coding easier or it can be described as like a library of scripts, of CSS files, of, I don't know, it can be many things. A dependency can be a lot of things. For example, there is this Bootstrap one, which contains, you know, Bootstrap itself, which is this big framework, y'all know. There is the GSUP one, which is for JS animations, I think. There is this Nanoid, or Nanoid, which I use a lot for key creation on React. There's a little bit more complex, as you can think. But here, for example, in projects.jsx, y'all can see that I'm importing Nanoid and I'm putting it here as a key. And y'all can find the dependencies on here, which is npm or npm.js. Here you can search for Nanoid. And as you can see, Nanoid here, there's Nanoid or Nanoid. 
and what this basically is a tiny secure URL friendly unique string ID generator for JavaScript to put it simply this gives you a key for each component that is mapped over the array for example you don't have to put an ID on this data I don't know offering this data no, on the skills data which is better I don't have to put an ID on each of these things like I don't know ID one so rather than putting an ID for each skill what I can do is basically import nanoid or nanoid and put it as a key here so yeah those are dependencies so this is the main one that I've used the most at the moment since I'm working a lot with react and data race so yeah that is another thing y'all guys can have in mind when creating a project which is searching for packages even though this is a little bit more complex many people don't really need to know dependencies that much they are just like little libraries that will really help you create things faster but yeah and that was it that is my thought process and actual things that i do before i start a project and how i structure my projects within the code and outside the code and i hope y'all found this helpful if there is any question about what i do i know i did this quite quickly so i know there could be a little bit questions left but if there is any question i'm open to responding to any of you guys i'm always super grateful for each and one of you so yeah thank you guys a lot and i hope y'all found this video helpful and I'll see y'all in the next one. Take care.